play a little melody. Let's everybody stand one more time. I know you probably feel like a jack-in-the-box, right? Now you got to remember, used to they didn't even have padded pews. They probably didn't even have seats. They were probably so excited about Jesus that they couldn't sit down. Amen. 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 They probably were so full of God that, that the only time they sat down was when it was time to lay down. Can you say Amen. So at this time, uh, I just want you to give you the opportunity to bring your tithes, your offerings, and your gifts. 
And just go around, even if you don't have a gift to bring or a time, just go around and shake somebody's hand. Just love on somebody. Amen. Is that all right? Hallelujah. Sister Nathan, this is your pleasure. Friend. Can you take that and give it to Sister Jackie for me? Thank you so much. You have your Bibles, and I hope that you do. If not, get your phone out, get on the Bible. Get on Snapchat, get on the Word. Can you say amen? amen? Let's go to Matthew, the 25th chapter. Very familiar scripture. We uh, we just come up with a theme uh, about 15 minutes ago for camp. And that theme is reclaiming the fog. Amen. But I hope it's okay if I go ahead and start that today. Amen. amen. Matthew, the 25th chapter, if you'd be so kind to stay with me as you read the word of God together. We'll read the first 13 verses. Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins, which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. And five of them were wise, and five were foolish. They that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. While the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. And at the midnight there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh, go ye out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said unto the wise, Give us of your oil, for our lamps are gone out. But the wise answered, saying, Not so, lest there be not enough for us and you. But go rather to them that sell and buy for yourselves. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came. And they that were ready went in with him. When they that were ready went in with him to the marriage, and the door was shut. And afterward came also the other virgins, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered, said, Verily, I say unto you, I know you not. Therefore watch, watch therefore. Ye know the stroke in her life. And he began to think about all the things that we encounter and go through on planet earth. And he began to think about the day that we would see Jesus. Now listen, I believe that everything that God did, I think God declares that we're to be healthy and whole today. I'm not waiting to be healed. The Bible says I am healed. Can you say amen? I'm not waiting for a healing. I've already got healing. And I'm not going to need healing when I get to heaven. Can you say amen? That really bothers me when people say, well, bless God, when they die, they got their ultimate healing. No, they got Jesus. Can you say amen? We don't need healing in heaven. We'll have a glorified body. But when we think about there'll be no more sorrow in heaven. Isn't that good news today? Because we live in a world that is full of sorrow. It's what's, I mean, you just watch the news in the last couple of weeks, right towards the end of school year, was rolling down. A, a demonized lunatic walked into an elementary school and gunned down children at free will. What sorrow that town must be facing. What sorrow families are facing knowing the tragedy and heartache and not knowing what they're going to be able to buy groceries and pay their bills and all these things. But i got good news for you today. When you live in the economy of God, I don't have to worry about what I'm going to eat. I'm not worried that I'm going to have gas. Come on, somebody. Y'all going to have to help me preach in here today. The people suffer sorrow for being alone. There's people in this room today that are probably lonely. There's people that are married that are lonely. There's people that belong in big groups and be around people all the time, but they're sorrowful because they're lonely. There's people that are lonely, and, and there's people that are sorrowful because their spirits have been crushed, they've been hurt, they've been abused, they've been neglected and put down. And we see that there's nothing around us but sorrow. People are sorrowful because of disappointment and letdowns. In their life, uh, they had people they thought they could count on, only to find out they were the ones that were plotting and scheming behind their back. They're sorrowful over their children, wondering how they're going to be raised, wonder what kind of world they'll face, what kind of country we have left after all this done to try to destroy this nation. We live in a place that's full of sorrow, but I got good news for you today. My God, one day we will look Jesus 
face to face. We'll be the place where there'll be no sorrow. We'll be the place where there'll be no grief. We'll be the place where there'll be no disappointment. I tell you, you might be lonely today, but if you've got Jesus, and I'm going to say this, Jesus is not all you need. He's what you need to get to heaven. But he, we, we need one another. It's not good for him to be alone. And if you feel alone today, you need to let somebody know so we can check it around you, rally around you. There's no need for us to be sorrowful. Now, I'm not talking about us. We're going to go through things. We've all had nights where we didn't sleep. We've all been like David, where our tears were our constant companion. We've been like David, where our tears soaked our couch. But one day, come on somebody, there will be a place that you and I will not sorrow anymore. Come on, you ought to get happy about that. Amen. Now, we don't know the day or the hour, that's what Jesus said. But I can tell you this, it is definitely closer today than it was yesterday. Amen. 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 But he didn't say we couldn't know the season. Amen. Yeah. He said we couldn't know the time frame, the year. Come on, somebody. Amen. He said you're not going to know the day nor the hour. Amen. I believe that Jesus, the body. Amen. I'm going to probably get ahead of myself and just forgive me if I do. Amen. That's all right, ain't it? Yeah. Yeah. You know, when we look, and I, and I listen again, I'm not here to debate any, any uh, time frame as to when we're leaving. That's the problem with much of the church world today Amen. is they all about loving their departure. When we're going to get out of here. Yeah. Amen. But that's what the Bible says. It says those that love his appearing. Yes. Who are you looking for when the, what boat you're getting out of here on or when he comes back? Yeah. I'm looking for Jesus. Can you say amen? Yeah. But I want you to know, I mean, we got the Bible. That's our instruction book. It's what we look to. The Old Testament, Paul said, was our schoolmaster, is it not? Yeah. Well, I noticed this. Before, before Sodom and Gomorrah was destroyed, God communed with Abraham about the plot that was about to take place down in Sodom and Gomorrah. Can you say amen? I know before the earth was destroyed with a flood, he consulted with Noah. Can you say amen? I believe that God's people, those that are true, the true bride, I'm not talking about the whore church. Amen. Amen. I'm not talking about the cold, backslidden, indifferent, compromised, weak need church. I'm talking about the bride of Christ. Listen, there's very little that I do that I don't consult my bride with first. Can you say amen? My bride knows what I'm doing. She knows where I'm at. She usually knows about what time I'll be home. Can you say amen? Now, she might not know the exact minute, but she knows that I'm coming. Can you say amen? amen? We're going to a place where there'll be no sorrow. We're going to a place that there'll be no pain in these bodies. Now listen, I understand that the outward man perishes and our bodies get tarred, they get achy, they get weak. And, but we're going to a place there'll be no pain. There'll be no physical pain. There'll be no mental pain. There'll be no inner pain. There'll be no pain in this place that we're going. Can you say amen? amen. Ain't you glad? Pain, I, listen, I'm, I'm going to tell you flat-footed today, ministry, whatever that may look like in your life, sometimes it's painful. Amen. It's painful when I see people at one point in their life be on fire for God Amen. and walk away from Christ. Amen. It hurts. Amen. But I'm reminded of what Paul told Timothy. The Spirit speaketh expressly Amen. that in the latter days many shall depart from the faith, amen. giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Can you say amen? amen? We talk about a third awakening, a greater revival that's going to come. And yes, I believe the bride of Christ will be illuminated in light with the power of God like the church has never seen. But at the same time, they will be a falling away. There will be a separation of church goers in the body of Christ. There will be a separation between the lukewarm and the hot. Somebody say amen. amen. There will be no pain in this place. There will be no pain of losing a loved one. There will be no pain of disappointment and despair that we all 
deal with and there'll be no tears. In Revelation 21 and 4, it says this, that God shall wipe away all our tears from our eyes. There shall be no more death, no sorrow, no crying, neither shall there be any more pain for the former things have passed away. That is a promise. Amen. Listen. God. It says, and God shall wipe away your tears. you you got to get your head around that this morning. Amen. God himself is going to wipe away your tears with his very own hand. The same hand that wrote in the plaster in the book of Daniel. The same hand that wrote with his finger the Ten Commandments. The same hand that in Joshua was holding the sword and declared that he was the captain of the Lord's host. The same hands that formed Adam out of the dust will wipe away your tears. The same hand that blessed and touched the little children. The same hand that pulled Peter up out of his drowning as he was sinking. The same hand that broke the bread and blessed the cup and will wipe away your tears. Oh, I can't get no help in here. Amen. The same hand. The same hand that lifted Tabitha on her deathbed. The same hand that was nailed and pierced at Calvary will wipe away your tears. The same hand that Pat Thomas stuck his hand into will wipe away your tears. Amen. There'll be no death in heaven. Amen. Death and hell will be cast into the lake of fire. This is the second judgment according to the scripture. I will never be woken again by salaries passing my house. I'll never go to another hospital in this place. Amen. I'll never go to another funeral or graveyard in this Amen. place. I'll never minister in the jails again. Somebody help me. Amen. Amen. There'll be no rehab centers. There'll be no courthouses. There'll be no judges. There'll be no nursing homes in this place. Where Jesus will take his bride. There'll be no drugstores. There'll be no police station. There'll be no waiting rooms. Wondering what's happening to your loved one. As they're in surgery. There'll be no waiting. There'll be no operating rooms. There'll be no ambulances. There'll be no more hunger and neglected or abused children. In this place called heaven. There'll be no war. There'll be no hate. There'll be no jealousy. There'll be no failure. There'll be no anger. There'll be no revenge. And there will be no fear in this place. Amen. Isn't that good news? Amen. But there will also be no foolish virgins. Amen. There will be no foolish virgins in heaven. Amen. So now we come to our passage of scripture. Jesus said the king of heaven was like ten virgins. These were pure. They had, they had not been tainted. They, they were declared clean. They were virgins before God. Amen. And they were all waiting for the bridegroom. There's not many churches that I know of that's not, that does not believe that Jesus is coming. I was a healer for, a heathen for most of my life. And I still believe Jesus was coming back one day. Amen. I lived like hell and believed that Jesus was coming. How foolish was I? So most of the church world believes that this bridegroom, that Jesus is coming. And they were all waiting for his appearing. They were waiting for his return. But five of them were wise and five of them were foolish. Amen. And the five wise took enough oil in their lamps. They all had lamps. They all had vessels to carry and hold on. But only five of them took oil to keep their lamps burning. Now this is where the church is today, folks. Amen. As we waited, as we waited, the church is slumbered and went to sleep. The Bible says all ten of them went to sleep. Amen. But thank God there's a shout coming from heaven. Amen. This same wake up church. Wake up sleeping pride. Jesus is coming. My God, that should be the place. That, that should be the thing that we proclaim in the street. Get ready. Get ready. Get ready. Because Jesus one day is coming back. He is going to come back to this earth. That's not a fable. That's something we say to keep people in line. Jesus, the King of glory, 
the King of Heaven, the King of Kings, the beginning and the end, the Alpha and Omega, is one day going to come back to planet Earth, and He's going to take His bride that's kept her oil in her lamp. Amen. But it's time the church wake up now. The church has been asleep. I said last week, and I'm going to say it again. Amen. All we hear, we got a whole month now, Pride Month. This is something I saw. No, I'm not making any accusation. I'm the, I just let the facts follow what they follow. Isn't it interesting that you know they hijacked the rainbow, God's bow, but God's bow has seven colors. Theirs has six, the number of men. Isn't it interesting that they chose a pride month and they chose June, which is the sixth month? And their acronym is LGBTQ. You say, well, that's just fine. You're right. But now it's LGBTQ plus uh -huh. six. And they have a platform. And they have a they have a community back in them. And it seems like they've been infiltrating everything, every movie, all song, all entertainment. Where is the church. Amen. Come on, somebody. I'm not standing here talking about the seven mountains. I'm not talking about taking on the seven mountains. I'm just talking about being the bride of Christ with the power of God and the fire of God burning in our bosom. If these things will just take themselves, we will take over if we just simply become the bride that Jesus called us to be. Amen. But we become bride. We can fell asleep. We become virgins with no oil in our lamps. They heard the cry that the bridegroom was coming, and they all went out to meet him. Amen. We cannot say that these were not believers. They believe. Isn't it funny that when Jesus interested, I shouldn't find his support choice for work, but isn't it interesting when Jesus said there'll be two in the field, one to be taken, one to be left? Isn't it interesting that he said that there'll be two in bed, one taken, one left? There'll be two on the rooftop, one taken, one left. And I don't know if you can count, but this is the odds. You got five flies and five foolish. Now, I'm not going to say this half's going to make it and half ain't. But it looks like there's a split right down the middle when it comes to those who are true believers and to those that are just Christian in name only. Amen. There seems to be a great divide in the two of church of goats who know how to act in church but don't know God. Those that have truly been born again of the Spirit of God, who are not going to compromise, who are not interested in backsliding, who are not interested in living with the world and being entertained by the world, there is a great divide. Can you say amen? And that divide is going to get greater. There's going to be a time when true believers are going to have a, such an anointing and God's power upon them that unbelievers, I'm not talking about the world, I'm talking about the ones sitting in the church house, they're going to get out of the way. They're going to get out of the church. They will be those that Paul was talking about. They will depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. It's, 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 when you read that, in, 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 I think it's 1 Timothy chapter 4, and he said, and some of these uh, doctrines of devils, it said they forbid to marry and they forbid uh, certain foods. And I thought, isn't that interesting that we live in a society now where you can marry anybody you want to? You, there's a lady, uh, and, and uh, it was overseas, I heard it on the, on the news, that she married her cat. She's legally married to her cat. Well, she, I mean, I mean, really, she did, what she did was kind of, I mean, she beat the system at their own game, what she done. She lived in an apartment complex that she couldn't have no pets. So she married her cat, because now it's not a cat, it's her spouse, it's not a pet no more, it's her spouse. But some brain, dead brain judge and some brain dead minister or somebody officiate that ceremony. Amen. Amen. Well, let's hang on. They can talk about how, that they can have a pride month. I guess I can talk about it. Amen. You got dead. Amen. You got dead believers, dead on the inside. Amen. Look real good on the outside, but inside they're full of dead men's bones. Marrying men to men. Marrying women to women. And let me tell you something. They are coming for your children. I don't know. I'm going to say that from now on until you get it through your head. They are after your children. When they can't reproduce. 
Two men can't make a baby. Two women can't make a baby. They can't their old men. And they're drilling that in your children's head day in and day out in the public school system. You better make sure they're in the house of God. You better make sure they're hearing the word of God. It needs to be spoken about in your home. Don't leave it up to me. Don't leave it up to your Sunday school teacher. Make sure you're proclaiming the word of God over your children in your home. Because what little they get here is not going to be enough. They got them for eight hours a day. Let's get back to these virgins. So he had five that were wise, five that were foolish. And they heard that he was coming, the bridegroom's coming, and they all woke from their slumber. And uh, they trim their they trim their their wig. I was saying they trimmed their lance, but they trimmed their wig. There's only one reason you trim your wig. And so that's so your light can burn burn brighter and clearer and hotter. That's the only reason you trim the wig, and so your light will be brighter. They had the concept of letting this little light shine. They had the concept that they were the light of the world, but they had no oil. See, there's a lot of people who have all the right concepts and all the right beliefs about God, but they had no oil. Amen. Now, I don't know where my assistants went this morning, but those that said they were going to help me, I need you to come now. And it looks like I've only got where they all at. So let me give you this little an an analogy. Because the reason I want to do this is because most of these young kids don't know a single thing about a language. They don't know a single thing about a lamp. Yeah, you. Chelsea, Shayla, are you listening? Well, come on. Billy? Now he's up here. So just bear with me this month. Now, don't you be easy with this. This is my grandmother. She break it, I might cry. <laughs> Do not drink this. This is not water. Amen. Don't spill it in. Where's my other, where's my other help? Now that I have, I have four. Anna, Abby, one of y'all want to come? Other you want to come? No? Okay. No? No? Do not touch this. Don't touch that. And don't be, don't be trying to like this. You hear me? You, you sure? We'll pick it up. So, we know that man is a triune being. We know that we are vessels. Right? Man is triune. He's a spirit. He has a soul and he lives in a physical body or a vessel. Right? And there's some vessels of honor and some of dishonor. Now, the inner man is this wit. Your inner man is dead until it's born again. It has no oil. You can set and light this thing and it will simply just burn up. Amen. But when you become born again, God comes along and he begins to pour his oil into you. Amen. He pours his spirit his oil Better move it because I don't really want to try to pick it up and drink it. Then this wick becomes saturated Amen. with the oil that God has poured into the vessel. Oh, I'm missing something. Yeah, here it is. Thank you, sir. Blessings. And Jesus said. Then John indeed baptized with water. Amen. But there's one coming after me whose shoes I'm not worthy to unloose. Amen. He will baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Amen. When he begins to purge and burn out of us all the impurities, when the oil and the fire come together, Amen. we have a vessel. Amen. We become the light in the dark world. See the problem wasn't that they weren't expecting. The problem was that they weren't ready. The problem was they were dark. And there wasn't a light to the world. They had let their oil go out. They had let Satan blow out their light. They had let the oil escape from their vessel. 
You may be seated. Thank you. Amen. Give my hand clap a cheer. <laughs> they went out. And the five wives were letting their lights. They trimmed their wicks. And they so did the foolish. But they all realized in that moment. The five foolish that they had no all. They tried to light. They tried to get a praise song going. They tried to get something going. But there was nothing inside of them. They was trying to get a shout. And there was no shout. Them. They were out of all. But the five wives had oil in their lamps. And they were lit. And they shine bright. Amen. And they were told the five foolish, we, we can't share our oil. Amen. We, we would love to, but if we share our oil, you're not going to have, we, we know it is going to have enough. Amen. So they say, go, go and buy where they sell and get your own oil. Amen. And that's exactly what they did. It wasn't that the oil was not available. So they didn't have it. Amen. Because they were still able to go buy oil. But the problem was they bought too late. Because while they were gone to get the oil, the bridegroom comes. Amen. And he takes them into the chamber. I find this, I've always found this very interesting. That those foolish virgins who now apparently had oil in their lamps, they found oil, or they wouldn't have came back. But they got to where Jesus was. They got to where the, the bride chamber was. And they called from inside. Or from outside. They were knocking on the door. And they were saying, we're here, we're ready. Let us come in. Jesus said, truly, the door is shut. And I can't let you in. There's going to be a lot of people left. Listen, this whole this, this whole living any way you want to. Amen. Let your fire go out. Let the oil burn out of your vessel. Because the longer I let this burn, there will be a time I'll have to put oil back in this. Amen. See, that's the problem with many people today. Listen, I'm not talking about that you got to be saved over and over and over again. I'm, I'm not talking about, I'm not even talking about a work salvation where Jesus made the first payment. you got to keep up the installments. I'm not talking about that at all. But I do know this. I read in the Acts 4, the chapter of Acts, that were Peter and John, who had been beaten, who had, who had done a great thing in the name of the Lord, and that a lame man had been raised up to walk, and they got in trouble, and they were threatened, and they were beaten, and they were brought before the council, and they said, you don't, we don't care if you preach, don't preach in the name of Jesus anymore. And they went back to their company, and they gathered together, and they prayed, and they prayed, and they prayed that God would strengthen them, that they could proclaim the word of God with boldness, and that he would heal by his hand, by the holy child Jesus. And the Bible says the house was shaken, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. Well, I want you to know Peter and John was already filled with the Holy Ghost back in Acts 2, but the Bible says they were all, that would include Peter and John as well, that were in the house. They were all refilled. They had to get more oil. And I'm telling you today, there's too many people sitting in pews in this place who have no oil. You have a form of godliness, but you deny the power of the oil to keep your fault running bright in your life. You're letting the oil go out. And I'm going to tell you, you see right now, I have to keep fluctuating the wick. Amen. There'll come a time I'll have to trim the wick. And there's going to be a time that this will run out of oil. Amen. It's too late when Jesus shuts the door to try to find oil. Even if you find it, it's too late. Amen. A verse that used to haunt me, and it, it should haunt many today if you're backslidden. Amen. When Jesus said, many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name? And in your name cast out devils. And in your name did many mighty works. Have we not done these things? 
Jesus professed to them, depart from me, ye workers of iniquity. I never knew you. He didn't even know him. But apparently they knew him. Amen. He said, but I don't know you. Amen. I've never known you. I don't know you. Amen. And there's too many people sitting in churches all over today that are coming in, they'll get their ears tickled, they'll feel good about themselves, and some may actually get convicted and repent, but not have a true change. They'll, they'll go right back out, and not today, but sometime by next week, and do the same thing they were doing, or maybe even worse, because there's never been a fire that's lit. They've had their conscience seared, and they do whatever they want. God turns them over to a reprobate man who, have, who, who acknowledge God, they recognize God, but don't recognize Him as God, and they begin to worship man. And four-footed beasts. They just ain't for the perverse. That's all that take place and they do such. There's be those that are hot, those that are cold, those that are lukewarm. You know, it was so long ago where every home, even as I was a kid, I never every home I ever remember going into had a cold old man. Now, we all had electricity. I mean, we were given us, but we still had electricity. Amen. We didn't have running water until I was about six or seven. Amen. But even if they never used them, they had them ready. Amen. They had them just in case. Amen. And they didn't wait until the electricity went out to decide to find oil for it. The oil was in it. The wick was trimmed. It was ready to go. All it needed was a spark. Now, I don't know about how this letter is made. But I can tell you it's very similar to how this letter is made. I definitely know how Zippo was made. They had a wick. And they had that fuel in. But when the fuel goes out, you can spark and spark and spark and spark. And nothing's going to happen. You must keep oil in your lamp. Because it's going to get dark, folks. We don't know. Listen, I'm not a doomsday preacher. But I've read the book. And it's going to get tough. And once again... Most of the church world will be the first ones to sign up for the mark of the beast. Yeah. You was a preacher, we won't even be here. I hope you're right. Mm -hmm. But I got my doubts. Because the love of money is the root of all evil. Amen. See, you can go along for a while. One day your lamp will run out of oil unless you get it refilled. Yeah. I wonder today how many need a refill. Yeah. We're almost to a flicker. See this wick is trimming already. See I can I can bring up the wick and get a big old flame. That's how many people do. They come out of the gate full of God with a big flame. When persecution comes, when the cares of this world comes, their life begins to flicker. And eventually, no more. They're in darkness. I wonder today, do you have oil in your lamp? Don't be a foolish virgin. Keep oil in your lamp. Because if you don't hear anything I said today, Jesus is coming back.
and say you say your answer all of them now. Because I have a whole part. See, all these versions look the same on the outside until it come time to put shine on light. Everybody in church many times looks all the same until it comes time to be a light to a dark world. Or some team, if you have something, you can come at this time. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. You might not be the big, big flame. But all it takes is a little bit of light to expel the darkness. I spent half my life being in people, being in houses, being in dark places. And it's amazing what, how, no matter how dark it is, even the faintest flashlight can illuminate your path. It exposes what's in there to hurt you. Imagine going to church and having to use a pull on a Better yet, can you imagine surviving what's going to come without love in your lantern? You're not going to make it. You don't want to make it, I'll just tell you. You'll cave in, you'll give up. There's many will depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Started in the household of faith. Why are we a city set on the hill? Nobody likes a candle. Nobody likes a lamp that hides it. These were set up high to bring illumination to the places that were dark in the home. This altar's open.